back to the channel. My name is Crawford. This is Virginia is for Lowriders, and this weekend we're going to attempt to get this body drop pretty much finished up. There's going to be a lot of odds and ends because these projects never stop, and there's always going to be something that I miss and didn't take into account. But the majority, the hard work, and like the, I don't know, most of the body drop, I hope, between right now and Sunday is going to be welded together and somewhat metal finished. That's the plan. That's the goal. I don't know how far we're going to get. If you've never been here before, this is what we've been doing. We have been adding this jungle gem of spaghetti back here. Three links, airbags, fixing old repairs and customization things that were not exactly done right it's been going for a couple months now so if you haven't seen the rest of the build go check out all those videos and yeah we're gonna try and get as much of this done as possible i have been slacking i just woke up from a nap and yeah excuses sick i've been sick for like 10 months you know and I had an ear infection, and then the couch magnet just sucks you in. Let's get to work. Stop rambling. Try and do something. First, like last weekend, we made that panel to go underneath the foot pedals. We need to make another one over there. We need to make the corners all the way around here come up with something to fill the little gaps and that'll be the majority of the body drop we're gonna try and tackle the trans tunnel I would like to make this thing work again whether that is a matter of just trimming the crap out of the plastic or cutting the floor which I'm kind of thinking plastic might be better because if I cut the floor and drop the tunnel it's going to be a space for the new carpet that i ordered and i don't want the carpet to be floppy right there so we got to figure that out i think i have another one of those things i got from the junkyard like i'm pretty sure that one came from the junkyard i have another one that we could sacrifice for testing purposes and we can stop rambling and we can get to work so I don't think I've ever talked about what I use for making templates and stuff. I figured I'd mention it because it might make it easier on somebody else. I buy Sharpies whenever they're on sale on Amazon. So you can get like a big pack of them for like eight bucks. Because I'm pretty sure that y'all know, once you put this down, it is gone forever. I can put one of these every six inches in here. But when I need one, I, it, it, it just poof. So this is called RAM board or temporary flooring or I don't even know what brand this one is. X board. It's temporary flooring. You can get it from Home Depot. It's kind of pricey, but it lasts for a very, very long time. I think they sell smaller rolls than this. And then this is packing paper. It's the same thing, but it's super thin. I use this thick stuff for making templates on rigid pieces that are going to be made out of like plate steel. I like to use this stuff on things as just like we're doing here for when I need to shrink or stretch or curve this gives me a better idea of exactly what I'm going to need to do so I can transfer those markings over from this to the piece of sheet metal while I'm bending it so yeah that stuff the packing stuff I think is like 20 bucks temporary flooring if you're do if you're not doing this a lot it doesn't make sense if you plan on doing a lot of templates you don't have just a bunch of random cardboard laying around. That stuff's kind of pricey now. When I used to buy, it was $30. I think it's like 50 bucks now. But I've also had that roll for like 
three years. It lasts a long time. So on the other side we found rust. So I'm going to try to accommodate for that. The edge is right here. We're going to make it a couple inches bigger. I have magnets. I have no idea where they are. So this is kind of a pain in the butt. So I know with this crease here, I know that with all these little creases, this entire section is going to have to be shrunk. I'll mark that out. This is all obviously rough guesses because all of this is going to have to get trimmed and fit as I go. Got my paper short, so I need to make sure that I add a little bit on that end. I know that this whole section is going to have to be tipped up. So, again, super rough markings of that. And that's the start of a template. Doesn't look like much, but I can build most of my panel just off of that. So I bought two trailer fenders to use as the tubs for the front. And on Amazon, they gave me an option to have these that weren't welted in. So I figured if I have to pay the money to get the fenders I want anyway, it's just sheet metal that I can use on something else. And it will work good for this because it fits almost perfectly on there. The exact, measurements of the exact measurements and shapes of this really doesn't matter at this point because all of this is going to get beat on and shrunk and stretched and tipped up and trimmed. One thing I do need to transfer over is my marks. Actually, this could be something like that. All of this needs to be shrunk. This needs to be tipped up. Well, just like the other side, I found rust on this seam right here. So I need to take this edge back about a half an inch. Just cut that straight off. But this is where we're at so far. I got a good bit of curve in this panel. It's nice and smooth. Got that edge tipped up. I tipped that edge up to a 90 and then because on this side is about 90 degrees and then I slowly worked my way in to where it fits against that wheel tub 100% and then this side since all of this is going to get trimmed back here this will relax a little bit because there's a lot of tension on there from however many thousands of hammer hits the uh, planishing hammer put into that corner of things kind of work hardened at this point. So I think I'm going to call it a night because I am making a ton of noise. That 
the planishing hammer is so loud. So in the morning, I'm gonna go ahead and trim that rusty crap off of there. Trim this to whatever length it needs to be. We're gonna get that guy welded in. So I'm gonna go inside and get back on that couch magnet, I guess. Yeah. Progress has to happen tomorrow. A lot of it. All right, so the next day, we are gonna try and get some of this stuff done. I got thinking about this last night. I went and found the parts one that I thought I owned still. So if the carpet lays up here and I was to section this entire thing, by the time it dropped down, the carpet would be, there'd be a gap between this and the carpet. But the more I think about it, or thought about it last night, if I just bring down this section to accommodate for this thing, the carpet will be underneath this thing, and I can probably just cut it to fit. So, basically, if it was dropped down somewhere around here, it'll all be hidden by the carpet. Because the shifter still has plenty of room. There's nowhere for it to, say, like, hit this. So, I think that'll work. So, we'll try to mess with that a little bit. For now, need to get this guy fit in there. You can actually see it a little better now that we got some daylight going on in here swell that I put in there and that edge that I tipped up so first off we're gonna mark this out cut this back about an inch and then trim that and start welding stuff in Pretty good so far. Do things nice and smooth. Got this guy cut out. Need to grind all of this on the other side. I think I'm gonna mess with this for a little bit though. Try and get it fit. So just cutting this out, that thing still doesn't fit in there. So I'm gonna have to get creative. I'm not. I don't care about that one because again, that's like a junkyard one's cracked. It's been crudely cut out with what looks like a gerbil. Uh, so I'm gonna trim that a bunch and just see if I can get everything to fit in there. And if not, I might have to get creative with this or more floor cutting. I'm not sure. But we're gonna see if we can get that to fit and go for it. All right, I have a game plan for this. I have trimmed and trimmed and trimmed this thing. And I think I got it to the point where it'll work when I trim the other one. I can't use the little cubby hole thing underneath the radio. Where did I set that thing? 
So I won't be able to use this thing, but I also have something that I want to put here. I think I want to make this a uh, switch panel of some sort, not for the airbags, but for some other stuff, which I will explain in a later video. <clears throat> Basically, this top mount's going to get cut off, which doesn't really matter because this radio doesn't weigh even a third of what a factory radio weighs because this is a just a cheap the closest thing I could find to looking like a cassette player Bluetooth radio off of Amazon so that'll get cut that'll get cut I trimmed the other one all the way around here trimmed the top of it off so I think I have that where it's going to need to be I cut these ears off which they kind of swooped up and these were welded on there I bent them in the 90s which I don't think is going to stay exactly at a 90 but this is going to get laid in here like it is I'm just going to fill in this gap which I probably should have planned for that a little bit better but just to have that little filler piece in there is not going to bother me so, I can actually keep this in place. Just for demonstration purposes. This will sit, I think from the factory it's kind of far back. I'm going to set it out just a little bit because there's, there's plenty of room here like this never even going to get close to that. I'm going to come out a little bit, but with those ears off, basically I'm going to hold this in place, probably tape it up to the dashboard or something, go in from the inside, screw these to this, set this in place, reach in there, tack weld all that together. So we got a game plan for this. I don't see any more problems with that. But right now, since I actually have access to the back of this, I can get this trimmed and these on both sides welded to this welded to this. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're gonna do that now. That'll be a really good portion of progress on that part. Well, it's another day. We got a lot of grinding done yesterday. The trans tunnel figuring out portion took a little longer than I was expecting it to. Probably should have just left it alone. Just left the trans tunnel high, not use the radio bezel, put the radio in the dash and been done with it. But I don't know. The more I thought about it, the more it seems like it would just be a big empty space kind of weird so yeah trans tunnel is where we're at so far welded in I gotta finish up some welds on the outsides I gotta make a little triangle filler piece thing here I got this guy pretty much metal finished I had to go back and fill in a couple spots that were had little pinholes in them that guy's pretty much done and it's looking like a floor again so, I'm going to knock that out real quick, 
on the top side of this. I'm going to clean up this edge. However, I can cut that. I think I'm just going to make a piece that's like a 90 twirled into there. And then on the bottom side, try to recreate the factory mounts. So we need to hurry up. I am slacking. Really, really slacking. Got to do this because I keep saying I got to do that and those. So let's just get to work. Trans tunnel all welded up. I think if you just look in there, it doesn't seem like anything's been done. Not enough to be like, oh wow, that's clearly not factory. Since all of this top metal is the factory stuff just bent down. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, we are looking pretty good now. Got all of that. Metal finished is probably as far as it's gonna go. Everything in here is gonna get seam sealed anyway. So most of this is like, well, all of this is completely unnecessary to be metal finished as far as I have. But whatever, it's gonna get seam sealed just to ensure no moisture gets in between anything. I'd say like 90% of it is butt welded. There are a couple spots that have the tiniest bit of overlap, but just to ensure no moisture, no rust, seam sealed, and the other side is going to get coated. So it's literally for no reason, but whatever. So radio bezel is in. I got a nice even gap all the way across. I'll put a little boot thing in there because this was a base model truck so it actually didn't receive the little bezel thing it was just the boot so i'm going to put just the boot back in there is a gap in between the two the gap is still here for the carpet to go up underneath because i i went through and shortened this probably by you can see here probably about an inch this is the one that's going to actually stay in the truck, but there's a significant difference in the bottom of that. I cut the top out of this one just so I could actually see in there and get all my spacing right. This one I don't have to cut the top out of, but like I said earlier, this is going to get blocked off. There will be switches in here because I want to run some accessories in this thing. So there'll be a handful of switches installed, but everything's looking pretty good. I'll, uh, I'll pull this out real quick and show you the trans tunnel. And then we're gonna move on to, I think this, cause I can knock that out pretty quick, hopefully. All of every car now and old has spot welded together. They never fully welded. So this thing already has pounds of wire in it compared to what they normally would have considering this whole cab wall is pretty much welded together so what i'm going to do here is i made this little template up to fill that gap i'm going to weld it across the back but you can kind of see those dots there where it was spot welded from the factory i'm just going to spot weld so I want to make up two of these, one for this side, one for that side. There's a hole where the harness went through over there. 
which I'm not totally sure how I'm going to run the harness. So I'm not going to mess with the hole today, but I'm going to make up two of these guys and weld those in real quick. Spot welds are on here, fully weld along there. So I need to prep all that metal and burn that in. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. I'll knock out that aside real quick. sides welded in the back cab wall is 99% done except for that hole which I said not positive how that's gonna work yet because I want to do something different because now that hole is kind of in a weird spot but so far decent progress for the weekend but we need to get something else done this corner it's already cut pretty straight. I think I'm going to come up with however that corner is going to be attached to the cab wall and get that welded in. That way we have some kind of something for the weekend because I feel like I got a lot done, but it didn't look like I got a lot done because it's a All right, so. I've been thinking about it as I've been grinding and beating on everything else. I don't think that I need to make this as thick as it was when I attach it to here. I think that the top just needs to match the rest of the floor. When I'm working on it from the bottom side, I just need to make sure that my braces from the floor to the rocker panel are stronger than they used to be and tie all of that in together and I'm probably gonna add because I'm taken away from this I'm probably gonna add some structure from this to the rocker panel to accommodate for all that so can't cover this hole up which would be nice but because I could just fill it and butt weld the sheet metal to that but there's bolts here for the door hinges so if the hinge was ever to go bad for any reason I would never be able to access those holes so what I need to do is bring this section down to here this can come straight across so I'm gonna come straight across and then try to curve it down into that area I won't be able to grind any of that and make it look pretty but it should be okay. Since I knew I wasn't going to grind all this off, I figured I'd spend a little bit more time trying to make the tack welds look a little bit more consistent. But, yeah, it looks pretty good. I might grind the top portion, but I'm not worried about the corner. Let's do the same thing to that side. Cutting this, like, three or four layered stuff is kind of a pain in the butt. More so than I thought it would be. 
And then I'm gonna get creative with the back. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. It's just significantly higher. It runs into, well, there's a cover that goes above this. So I guess I'll have to trim the cover after the fact. But we'll knock that out real quick and probably call it a night so I can get this edited. Again, not as much progress as I wanted to, but we're still creeping forward. call it a night pretty good progress like I was thinking about it first I was like I didn't really get that much done but I got almost everything done that I said I was gonna get done in the beginning of the video except for the rear corners everything else is finished oh. hard to see but the floor is all one piece except for those corners which we will probably do in two weeks next week we I've already decided I need to to tackle it because there's a good chance that it might end up being more work than I'm thinking we need to do the front fenders or front inner fenders so we're going to be using these two trailer fenders and those will get molded into the factory fender braces. There's not gonna be very much of the fender brace thing remaining by the time we get this done because we need to go up about a half an inch which I'll overshoot it just to make sure that there's room for growth which I should have did in the beginning but again my buddy owned it and he kept saying oh, I'm not gonna body drop it. I shouldn't have listened and I should have just made the wheel tubs way bigger. But there's a chance, not positive, I might have to move the clutch master cylinder over up somewhere else. So check back in next week. Hopefully from beginning to end we will get both of those welded in there. And again, if you had never been here before, please subscribe and if you have, already subscribed thank you and uh, yeah we'll see you on the next one